Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning again, Rob. It had been kind of frightening uh, with Dale Lee talking to his daughter. They did not know whether it was an intruder in yeah. the school or just a threat or whatever, what it was. But it's, uh, it's kind of frightening times, and it's, uh, unfortunately we're seeing more and more and more of those. Yeah, I remember that used to be a headline, and now when yeah. you hear something about a school, it's yeah. unfortunately become so common. I don't even know that it raises yeah. your attention more than a traffic accident would. Unless you're a parent. Then it's a big yeah. deal, yeah. absolutely. It's yeah. a big deal to all of us, of course, yeah. but unfortunately it happens with so much frequency. Our uh, guest in this segment is Michael Mood as we turn our attention to the Jefferson County Commission race. And Jefferson County obviously is uh, a, a community that over the last year or two has uh, been divided. There's been some problems there. And even if you go back before that, the whole Rockwell battle that was there and such, and I know they're looking forward to bringing in a new county commission and settling things down there. We welcome back Michael Mood, who we met during the primary season. And he is, as they say in the NCAA tournament, survived and advanced <laughs> as he's gone forward there. Michael, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. You're out of the Middleway District? That is correct, yes. And in the general, Natalie Grantham Friend is your opponent? That is correct, yes. I'm, okay. And, and both of you had agreed to participate in our candidate forum later on in October. We'll be doing two forums, by the way, for our audience October 15 and October 22. Both of those will be at the Berkeley County Commission Chambers, just like they were uh, for the primaries. We'll go 8 a.m. until noon uh, both of those days. And the forums are very much set up on when people can make them. So there's a bit of a mix. It's not going to be a Jefferson County Day and a Berkeley County Day. They'll kind of be in between uh, based on who can make what day and what time. We appreciate everybody uh, working their schedules out because we understand that people have to work for a living, and these forums do take place during the work day. Uh, Michael, what are the most important issues for you as you see them in this upcoming election? Uh, for one, we need to get back to a lot of civility in the commission. It's been very turmoil uh, over the past couple of years, and we have a uh, very big change this year as we're going to elect four commissioners, which is unprecedented. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I've ever heard of this in the state. Four of the five will be new members. Correct. So I look forward to working with others and building the common goal and common good for Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. As we see Jefferson County exploding in growth, uh, we're building houses on top of houses on top of houses, but no jobs. Uh, most of these people are leaving the county to go somewhere else to work. Yeah. Um, as they're leaving and going somewhere else to work, that's tax dollars that we could be earning here Careful that, with could, your hands yeah, are, yeah. that could help with the, uh, the public safety needs and the education needs that we have in this county. Economic development in, in Jefferson County is, uh, I think, a very divisive issue as well because you've got a, a group that wants very little industry, and if there is industry, it should be in one specific section of, of the county, and uh, you've, you've got a group of people that wants for the most part, primarily service sector jobs, tourism, uh, things that uh, don't emit anything into the uh, into the atmosphere. And when we interview folks about that, that seems to be the dividing line. Are you, at this point, Michael, a person who's decided what kind of economic development you want in Jefferson County? We need a little bit of each. Um, we need to build jobs that have good wages um, so that these people who are coming here to live can actually stay here and work. Mm -hmm. um, the, a lot of the tourism jobs, while they're great jobs, they're, you know, the wages are okay, but they, in the exploding house uh, growth in this county, the values have gone way up and housing has become much less affordable for people. Yeah. So we've got to bring jobs into Jefferson County that people can afford to live and work here. But you, you say that there has been a resistance of bringing good jobs in Jefferson County. It's not yes, just it now. Uh, uh, Rockwell is an example, but Absolutely. that's gone back for, I think, the years of Greg Corliss and Rusty Morgan when they were county commissioners. <laughs> you still had the same pushback against that. Uh, building houses do not pay for themselves as far as the economy. I think it costs, that's correct, yes. it's, it's a negative, um, uh, negative flow to the budget. Uh, so uh, how do you get past it? I know, I know there's a lot of lip service, uh, but I've heard from uh, second and third hand at the state level, state development authority level, uh, that they said that why invest any time in Jefferson County? Because Jefferson County is going to make it so difficult for business coming in. Case in point, the pilot program. There is a push against uh, a pilot program in Jefferson County based upon uh, 
what they consider to be moral issues, but yet every county in the state depends upon a pilot to bring business in. Whether you like it or not, that is a mechanism. So with Jefferson County pushing back and the uh, state development authority saying, wait a second, why should we help Jefferson County? How do you get over this impasse? I think some, if we're going to look at pilot programs, they've got to be reasonable. Um, as we look at the pilot program that uh, Wind Hill Solar Farm wanted to do, they wanted a pilot program for the entire life of their operation, yeah. or they could not afford to be here. That, to me, is a pilot program that makes absolutely no sense. And that's not also a typical pilot program. Most Correct. Of, most of the pilot programs are uh, somewhere between 7 and 14, 15 years. That's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. So the, and the pilot programs are also designed for places that are going to bring jobs that are yeah. typically in that 100 or more jobs in the county. That's right. Um, the, uh, the solar compound they were talking about wasn't going to do that. Yes. Uh, so some of it has to be education to people. We have to have properly zoned areas where we can build the business um, so it's not going in all over the place. Um, and but, we have to talk to people and tell them that these are things that we need to be able to survive. And some of the things they're seeing now is the change in the ambulance service, the uh, harder time with education, uh, funding for education, and law enforcement. Uh, we don't have the money for these services, and that's some of the an education to people that we need that. Uh, and unfortunately, the only way to do that is with business growth in the county. Yeah, but there has to be a uh, an acceptance of business to have growth, correct. and that is something that it may be there now, but it has not been obvious in years past. I would agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Michael Mood, our guest here on the program, candidate for Jefferson County Commission out of the Middleway District. Michael, what would you bring? You said you wanted to bring some civility back to the Jefferson County Commission. How would you accomplish that? Uh, for one, we need to make sure meetings are open, and we need to make sure our minds are open and our ears are open to one another. Uh, we cannot go in here and it's my way or the highway mentality and ram things through. Um, that's just not acceptable. Are you thinking of any specific examples of that as you bring that up? There are so many examples over the past couple of years. Um, what do you elaborate as, as, as we look at the um, replacement of uh, Commissioner Ath and how that process had, had gone through, um, there was little discussion. Um, and when a vote was tied, they basically just kicked it to uh, JREC instead of having some further discussion on that. JREC being um, what now? The Jefferson County Republican Executive okay, Committee. Okay. Um, they just kicked it right straight to JREC instead of having some discussion on it. Discussion doesn't always mean you're going to change my mind, but if we have open discussion, you might. Mm -hmm. And without that, uh, I just think it is impossible to effectively work forward. Is that the leadership of Jefferson County Commission? That is correct, yes. Okay. And I assume you mean Steve Stolifer? In this particular case, yes. Um, but everybody, you know, everybody kind of had their stance they wanted to be. I think when they were a 2-2 number, I think they should have looked at it and said, okay, let's go back and talk about all the candidates that had put in for this. Let's have some more discussion on this. So it, it's a two-way street. It's not just one person. It, it's two ways. Let's talk about solar in Jefferson County because you can't not. Correct, right, you, almost, yeah. you have to. Give me your thoughts on what you've seen unfold and what you would like to see in the future. Um, so early on, I was a lot softer on, on my opinion on solar as I talked to farmers to see what they needed uh, and why they were doing this. And the reason they were doing it was because their kids have decided to do things besides farming, yeah. and they're heading more towards a retirement and trying to figure out how to survive. And what they're doing is looking for the most amount of money for what their land is. Any business person would do that. Um, solar, without government subsidies, couldn't pay the amount of money that they're paying per acre to be able to get this land. And they're outbidding other farmers. Other farmers, they could lease this land out to other farmers to do corn or soybeans or some of the things that I've been talking about is vineyards. Um, there's some vineyards in Loudoun County that are interested in coming to Jefferson, but as soon as they look at coming over here and look at the prices, they're outpriced uh, per acre so it's not effectively possible for them to come. Um, so in looking at that, it's made it very difficult for other things to come in. And then listening to what the communities have talked about and seeing it actually go in, right up against property lines, yards off of a property line. Uh, if you had a house along that, that has just drastically reduced your house value. Um, some had said that when it's done, it's under construction. When it's done, it'll look good. Well, they've cleared all the topsoil. There's nothing for grass to grow on. So now we've got a wasteland of solar panels, weeds, 
and improper runoff. The hard rain we've got this morning, you'll watch the runoff coming from this and just pouring down Everett's Run heading for the Shenandoah River. Did you see it this morning? Um, I didn't come past that way this morning, but I have been past it in the rain um, and seen firsthand this running down. And you'll look at the Shenandoah River, and on the Charlestown side of it, it'll be mud-covered water. And on the mountain side, it's clear until it gets further down river. Are there any regulations put on these uh, solar farms in regards to water runoff? Um, there should be. Um, I don't believe there are at the time. I, um, I would be very surprised that there are not. Uh, the county, is, uh, the DEP has mm -hmm. requirements. Correct. The DEP county, does yeah. have some requirements. Yeah. But uh, I think they need to be larger. Okay. Um, and we need to, to look at getting these. If we're, something we're going to allow, uh, I think it needs to be something we have to have much larger setbacks on. Mm -hmm. We need to have better uh, stormwater management on and buffer areas to set this back and block its view from uh, the properties around it. But this is a zoning issue, and Jefferson, correct, County is. Is Jefferson County is the only state in the only county in the state with countywide zoning. So to me, it's kind of paradoxical that, you, one, you have a county with zoning, and you have the county that's been most vocal now because a zoning issue is not being followed. Correct. Yeah, is is the zoning issue not being followed? In other words, are these are these solar fields being put in places that are not permitted by zoning, no, or they, does the zoning not they, cover this no, to the, the point where it restricts it? It does not cover to the point that the uh, uh, the residents are happy with it. But no, they're complying with zoning. Correct. Yeah, that, so, that's correct. They're yeah. complying with current zoning, which is why they're there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what the residents would like to see is a much more strict zoning on that. Yeah. Um, now, I, I read uh, within the last week that in regards to Jefferson zoning, every time there's been an appeal to the courts, Jefferson County has lost the zoning ruling. Are you familiar with that, Mike? A little bit, yes, I am. And you're talking about uh, Harper's Ferry for one. For one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. So yeah. If, if you have zoning, but you can't enforce the zoning requirements that you put in place, do you really have zoning? That's, that's a good question, yeah. Right? It's, yeah. So it, with these... Uh, with these farms, though, Mike, I know what you're saying is it's a stacked deck. If the federal government can subsidize solar to the point where they have more money mm -hmm. to offer to a private landowner as opposed to a vineyard, which can't match that kind of funding, how do you really have fair competition That's for right, an alternative yeah. for that land? So right now, do you blame the landowner for saying, if I can get more money for solar, then why would I not? If I'm, if I'm, the, if I'm your kid and I don't want to farm your land. That's correct. The, the, the farm owner is looking how to leave the legacy to his family or how to survive through his retirement. So you really can't fault him for that. Um, but as we look at it as a community, yeah, that's, that's where some of the problem comes in is that, you know, we, the farmer's doing what he needs to do to survive and the community is unhappy with it, and it's affecting their property values. Do you have any idea what percentage of farmland has flipped to solar farms over the last couple of years since this became possible in Jefferson County? Percentage, I do not. It's uh, My understanding is five, uh, five compounds they're looking at. The one that's currently in, um, and there's four others that have met approvals, but I'm not aware that they've met any permitting as of yet. And, let's, and going back to the contrast between Berkeley and Jefferson County, we have a large farm going, solar farm going into Berkeley County, and there is a little bit of a, uh, pushback on the edges, but not very much. Mm -hmm. Certainly not what we have in Jefferson County, which kind of harkens back to the point we we're making earlier. There's been a long standing uh, uh, divide between bring industry in or, or bring businesses in or keep it as uh as you're money. correct and it makes yeah. it very hard to bring and attract business here and because of that divide and the alternative is to build more and more houses and this comes back to the fact that the housing development as far as the local economy it does not pay for itself that's correct yeah uh, and unfortunately what you're going to see more and more out of that if we're not doing something that's going to pay for itself you're going to see the need for fees and levies to be added on to your property taxes to help make up yeah. that difference yeah. and there again that's not very popular either 
So sometimes I think we have to look at what's the lesser of the two. If we can encourage business and not increase taxes on ourselves, I think that's the better answer. Yeah, and going back to, Will, is Jefferson County prepared to encourage business or being very, very, very selective in what sort of businesses they encourage? I, I think that they need to... A certain point, be a little selective what businesses that they are encouraging, um, because if you're encouraging things like Rockwell, which is heavy industry, which has created a lot of pushback, I think we need to try to stay away from that. And maybe what we need to do is uh, task our development authority with looking at where these new residents are working or the types of work they are doing so that we can encourage some of those businesses out in this direction. Okay, you mentioned Rockwall. Uh, you mentioned pushback. Uh, has there been pushback in terms of problems or pushback in terms of attitude? I think it's attitude. I, I look, do too. Look, I looking do too, at yeah. Rockwall, Rockwall has been a great neighbor in the community. Mm. Um, they have met, to my understanding, all the emissions uh, requirements. They have been producing good jobs. Uh, the, the jobs, my understanding, are almost $20 an hour for entry level and over 30 for their more skilled trades. And they're at about 125, I believe it is jobs on site now. Um, that's a good employer in the county. Yeah, in it, fact, I'm gonna clarify that because we were discussing this yesterday with your opponent, Paul Espinosa, who of course mm -hmm, works for yeah. Rockwell, texted me and said that the entry level jobs are at 19. There are several uh, skilled labor positions, electricians and such that are 36 to $39 an hour. And there are 150 people currently employed by Rockwell. Yeah. Going back to yeah. the attitude, if if we had a Rockwell type of plant going in a different part of Jefferson County, do you think they would be received the same way that Rockwell was? Unfortunately, if it was a heavy industry like that, yeah. probably so. And, and I think that we need to look at the big picture of things. If they're meeting the standards, um, I think it's something that we need to look better at because it can benefit this county. Uh, Mike, does West Virginia Water control any of the water in the Middleway District? No. The Middleway District is all well water. All well water. Yeah. Okay. Has water been an issue in your district? Um, as far as water quality, absolutely. Um, I can tell you at my house, I've had to do a fair amount of filtration on it um, to be able to get the water to be uh, the iron and stuff out of the water to make it not smell like sulfur and make it uh, something that's more usable. Mm -hmm. As far as quantity in my area, I haven't had that problem. But as we're adding all these houses to the county, that can absolutely be a problem. And I think we need to look at the study to see what they're using, where the water's coming from, and what water we have available to be able to continue this growth. This came up on the chat, uh, Facebook chat yesterday. Uh, uh, Berkeley County put an ordinance in place 20 years, 15 years or so ago that would require to do a historical water budget mm -hmm. for development for 15 homes or more. In other words, before you could approve a development of 15 homes or more, you had to look whether the groundwater would sustain this. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson County does not have this ordinance. So basically you're doing a flip of the coin. Hopefully that's you're correct. not drawing the water down too much. That's, that's correct, yeah. yeah. Would you like some type of study on that to become I, part of every development project? That I think it absolutely should because we've got to make sure that we have the infrastructure here to support the development. Well, again, yeah, the infrastructure to support the development. But what frightens me with the water uh, is that you could have a historical home, been there for 200 years, and if, if a development comes in and starts pulling down your water table, you've lost your well. That's correct, yeah. because the water tables that we're in are very large pockets. That's exactly right, exactly. Um, uh, I mean, some of the things that, that we do... I, um, I do heating and air conditioning. I own a heating yep. and air business, and we do geothermal uh, for some of our products. And when we have well drillers come in, that's some of the things that we have to watch for. And sometimes we hit these large cavities of water, 
and they can be from well to well attaching to one another. That happens on people's properties. Yeah, unlike sandstone, unlike other types of rock where the water is diffused throughout a large area, that's not the case with, uh, with limestone. Correct. It is in pockets, as you said. Co correct, yeah, it's so, in pockets, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about you, Mike, and what you do for a living and your business. Um, so I own uh, a heating and air conditioning business and a towing business in Charlestown. Now, what are they called? Uh, Superior Service Heating and Air Conditioning and Creamer's Record Service. And how long have you done that? Uh, the heating and air, we opened in 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, the towing, we bought out in 2015. How many people do you employ? Um, currently, I, between the two companies, I employ uh, six full-time people. And, and what has been your experience as a business owner in Jefferson County and in the state of West Virginia that you would like to see uh, continued or improved? Um, well, we've gone to, uh, to inspections and we've gone to... Uh, some more strict codes on buildings, sometimes a little too strict compared to over in Virginia, which slows things down a little bit, makes it a little bit more expensive to build over here. But I still think we're on the right track. We're building good homes. Uh, we're making sure that they're built safe and they're built out here, that they're going to last. What could Jefferson County do in regards to assistance to local businesses? And I'm not talking financially necessarily, but maybe streamlining or easing uh, some of the burdens and requirements for uh, regulation and registration and paperwork and such? It's really not that difficult. Um, West Virginia and Virginia are kind of similar. They do things kind of opposite of one another, and but they're very similar to one another. They have some, the different uh, municipalities have their city business licenses and contractor's licenses. It's, it's really not that difficult to, to get them if you've got your state licenses uh, that you're supposed to have. The cities are just a annual renewals of them. It's not really that big of a deal. About three minutes left. Let's talk okay. fire and EMS in Jefferson County. Your thoughts about the study a couple of years back and the implementation of those changes? Um, initially, I was very opposed to it. Um, as a founding member of one of the fire companies in, uh, in Jefferson County, I'm uh, one of the founding members of Middle Way Volunteer Fire Company. Been their chief since it opened in 08. Um, we worked very hard to build a great service out there, and the county very quickly came in and kind of upended the cart. And several areas in the county don't have an ambulance located in them anymore, Middleway being one of them. Um, once I, we, once I assume we, you object to that. Uh, I object to us not having one, but what I've done instead is come up with a plan of how to, how to do a workaround for it. We've actually developed a uh, rapid response program that we've pitched with Dr. Therese, who is the medical director for the county. Um, we're finishing up the class this week on that. That will allow our members, it's a little bit lower level than a transport EMT. Mm -hmm. It's called an EMR. Uh, once they get clear of that and get cleared as a provider, our rapid response unit will be able to respond in ahead of the ambulance and start providing care to uh, the patient until the ambulance gets there, um, until funding is enough to where we can actually have an ambulance stationed at our station. But isn't it kind of dual uh, uh, supports, dual organizations? You have the, the rapid response and you have the ambulance as well. Uh, so you got two separate units doing the same thing? Uh, the rapid, it, similar, but no. Um, so we've had several occasions. We've had two in particular this year where my rapid response unit has gone out with a cleared provider um, to somebody who was in cardiac arrest, and both of them are alive today because our unit got out there ahead of that ambulance and started providing care. But if you had not had the reorganization of the Amazon Authority, uh, would you have needed your rapid no, response? We, we would not have needed it. Mike, about a minute left. It's yours. You can talk to any of the voters out there who are considering you for Jefferson well, County Commission. Well, one of the things we haven't really talked about is child care. Um, in all this growth of housing, um, one of the things that we're lacking on is child care. Uh, the average wait time to get into child care is almost 13 months. Um, mm -hmm. That is incredible. So as we're looking at finding jobs here, where are they going to put their kids for daycare? They've got to schedule daycare before they have a child. That makes no sense. And so we need to look at things to increase child care in the county. Uh, the YMCA is looking to expand and come over into Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got great before and after care programs. And we need to encourage things like that. So we have to look at the whole big picture of what we're going to do. We've got to encourage business growth. We have to find a place for their kids to be during the day or before and after school so their parents have care, so they can get out and they can work. Um, we need to do things that help protect property values, and we also need to do things that will help protect the farmer. Um, one of the things I've always been able to do is work with others and find a, find a goal, find a reason to be able to do something and find a way to make it happen. 
Mike, uh, how do people find out more about your campaign for Jefferson County Commission? Uh, they can follow me on Facebook or mood number four West Virginia.com, and that's my website. And we've got several meet and greets that are coming up here in the next couple of weeks, and we look forward to seeing people out there. Mike, thanks for coming in today. Great to meet you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful to Thank have you. you. Michael. Michael Mood out of the Middleway District for Jefferson County Commission.